So in the last video, you hopefully got a good idea of how you can use manipulatives like glass beads or you know you could use Legos, so you don't have to use what I use to help you visualize and balance equations. Or you could also use tally marks. Um, but because this is visual chemistry, I'm going to demonstrate everything with manipulatives. So what I want to do this time is I want to show you some scary equations. And the reason I call these scary equations is because these are the ones that my students hate. Like if I give them these without any help, they get stuck. And so there are a couple of tricks, and that's pretty much what I want to give you this time, is a couple of tricks for dealing with slightly tricky situations. Our first reaction for this video is the combustion of butane, C4H10. And remember, combustion means a reaction with oxygen gas to make carbon dioxide and water. You can see these are the same products that we had before because anytime you burn something that's just carbon and hydrogen, you get carbon dioxide and water. So let's look at this. You can see we're burning a much larger molecule now. but we're still making the same little molecules here. So here are our four carbons. Here are 10 hydrogens. Here are our two oxygens. And let's see what's going to happen when we start transferring these over to the product side. First of all, you can see that we only need one carbon for every carbon dioxide, and we haven't used up all our carbons. So just from the beginning, I'm going to say straight out, we need enough carbon dioxides to use up all of our carbons. Now you can see, once again, that we're not going to have enough oxygen, so we're going to need enough oxygens. How many more oxygen? Well, one two, three more sets of two oxygens, and I'm just going to put that over there to remind myself how many we used up. We'll do our double checking later. Now what we need to do is we need to get our hydrogens over here by turning them into water. So you can see two things are going to happen. First, we don't have enough oxygens. I'll add those later. But also, we have way more hydrogens over here than are going to fit into one water molecule. So we need two in every water molecule. How many water molecules can we make? Let's just put them over here in sets of two. We can make five water molecules with these hydrogens. And how many oxygens is that going to take? Well, one oxygen gas molecule would be two oxygens, right? So there's one that we're going to use up. And you can see that works to take care of two waters. Um, we need another oxygen gas molecule. Okay, so. Da, da. And we still have one left, so we're gonna need another oxygen gas molecule. And, well, shoot. We still have one oxygen atom that hasn't been used up yet. This is why my students hate balancing this equation. Because, because, how can you get rid of this? If you try and use this to make a water molecule, then you need more hydrogens, but we don't have more hydrogens. If you try and use it to make a CO2, you need more carbon and yet another oxygen, and that's not gonna work either. So what are we gonna do? Now, I want you to th think of this in terms of packaging, right? We have used up one, two, three, four, five, six oxygen packages and we have used up half of this one, okay, six and a half. And it would be really nice if we could use up another half package. Well, what I'm gonna suggest is that 
I'm going to move this one down here, right here. If we doubled everything that we started with, except for that half package, right? You could see that to use up this whole C4H10, we would need six more packages of oxygen plus another half package. And this half package using up this butane plus this half package for using up this butane would make one whole package of O2. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm just gonna, here are our 10 hydrogens and four carbons. Here are our other oxygens. And now what are we gonna make with all these? Well, we're gonna make twice as many CO2s, right? Because all of these carbons have to be used up. And each of those is going to need two oxygens. And then we're going to need five more waters to use up all of these hydrogens. All right, and you can see one, two, three, four, five. Okay, whew. So, our balanced equation, we'll check this in just a moment. We now have two butanes. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 oxygens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbon dioxides. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 waters. So let's double check this by making sure that everything in the product side will fit back nicely into the packages on the reactant side. So here's four carbons. Here's four more carbons. Four, two, four, six, eight, ten hydrogens, and two, four, six, eight, ten hydrogens, and then we have all of our oxygen gas. And, oops, and so you can see that all of the atoms on this side are completely contained within molecules on the reactant side. So we did it, yay! So now let's do that using the tally mark method. I laid things out. Again, we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. We have reactants and we have products. And let's go ahead and start. We have four carbons on this side. We have 10 hydrogens. And we have two oxygens. We have one carbon on this side. We have two oxygens. And I'm going to actually keep um, the oxygens in two separate parts. These are from the carbon dioxide and these are from the water. So we have four here, we have one here, and obviously that has to change. Let's start by adding four more, four total carbon dioxides. And so you can see what's gonna happen here. You have, these are from one, actually let's move this over here. These are from one carbon dioxide, two carbon dioxides, Three, four. So now our carbons check out. Now we have 10 hydrogens here and only two here. How are we gonna add more hydrogens on this side? Well, there's only one thing that has hydrogens in it. That's water. So let's add enough waters. That the hydrogens balance now we have to balance the oxygens. So we have two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. 
oxygens over here. And that does not match up with a number that's divisible by two. So what is that? That is, again, that is six and a half oxygens. So this is what we have so far. We can't have half oxygens in a balanced reaction. And so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply everything, right? If you think of this as six and one half, if you multiply everything by two, that fraction will go away. So this will be two C4H10 plus two times six and a half is 13 O2 will give us eight CO2 and 10 waters. Now you could now go through and double check by saying, well, here's one, two, three, four. So how many carbons? You have two molecules with four each, that's eight carbons. You have two molecules with 10 hydrogens each, that's 20. You have 13 molecules with two oxygens, that's 26. And then you have, I'll just start these all over again for simplicity's sake, eight molecules of carbon with one each, that's eight. So that checks out. Um, you have eight molecules of CO2 with two oxygens each, that's 16. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. There's 16. And then we have 10 molecules of water with two hydrogens each, so 10 times two is 20. And so now our hydrogens match, and we have 10 molecules of water with one oxygen each, so 10 times one is 10, so we have another 10. And now you can see we also have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26 oxygens here, so now that matches up. And so that's how you do that. The real key to solving this problem is how do you deal with something where you have half a package and the answer is always to multiply everything by two. So that is my trick for doing these things. You will see it a lot, especially in hydrocarbons where you end up with a, a half molecule of oxygen. Just, just multiply everything by two. So now we're going to talk about the last category of equations that students find scary, which is something in which you have large numbers either of elements or of atoms overall. So what I've chosen to do here is I've chosen to use a reaction that involves five different elements, barium, carbon, oxygen, sodium, and chlorine. And people always get really freaked out when they see something like this. So the reason these equations freak people out is because they don't understand a very simple principle, which is that when you have these molecules, right, here's our, this is going to be, the blacks are going to be barium, and the sodiums are going to be these browns here, and the green will be chlorine, this time instead of hydrogen. When you have these molecules and they react, they don't necessarily completely come apart. So you remember when we had say CO2, we are like, well, here's this carbon, and here's these two oxygens. And they, we just treated them as individual units, like the whole molecule was coming apart and then it was reacting. But that's usually not what happens. What usually happens is molecules come apart in chunks. So what I want you to notice is that this chunk here, the CO3, also shows up on that side of the equation. What does that mean? It means that probably this carbon and three oxygens are not going to come apart. They're going to travel as a group. And so I want you to think about that as we balance this equation. So let's look at this. We have a CO3 group over here and we have a CO3 group over here. So this CO3 group is going to come over here. What will then happen to the barium in, in this molecule? Well, it's going to have to go here. 
let's look at what happens to our sodium chloride here. Our sodium has to go here. Is this molecule now complete? No, it needs another sodium. We, we have Na2. So where's that sodium going to come from? It's going to have to come from sodium chloride. Right, so we need to start with another one of these molecules and now you can see we can have our two sodiums here, sodium, and then these chlorines can go over here to make the barium chloride. So again, we now have one molecule of the barium compound plus two molecules of the sodium compound gives us one molecule of the barium chloride and one molecule of this. So you can also use the Telly method for this. And what I like to do, instead of having carbon and oxygen as separate elements when I do the Telly method, let's just treat them as a group so we can have barium, sodium, chlorine, and CO3. And you can see how that would simplify things. So here's our reactant side and our product side. And now let's look here. We have one barium and one CO3. We have one Na and one Cl. We have one barium and two chlorines. We have two sodiums, one CO3. And so you can look down and you can say, hey, we need more sodium and we need more chlorine. We can get that by having two sodium chlorides. And now our equation balances. So just to show how much easier this makes it, I have put together another of these equations. And this, this is the sort of thing that drives my students absolutely batty. But you can see it's set up very similarly to the one that we had before. This is kind of a, an interesting way of writing a chemical that we haven't seen before. This thing that's in parentheses here, PO4 in parentheses, with a subscript of two tells us that we actually have two of these PO4 groups. So that's actually telling us that the PO4 is its own little group. And you can see that PO4 group over here as well, right? So what is this saying? This big package is composed of two of these PO4 groups and three variants. That's our package, right? This group right here is composed of an oxygen and two sodiums, all right? And we're gonna make something that has barium oxide and sodium with this PO4 group. Now these are, this is actually an ionic reaction. We'll talk about this in an upcoming episode of how to balance and use ionic reactions. But I just want you to see, you can use these same principles with really gigantic molecules where you could have, you know, 20 or even 100 different atoms, but when th they react, only two or three of those atoms will come off and the rest of it stays as a group. So that's sort of what I want to show you with this. Let's balance this, right? We need to make barium oxide groups. Each one of these bariums is gonna make its own little group. And we'll need three oxygens from that. So what does that tell us? It tells us that we need three sodium oxides to start with. So right there, our oxygens will go over here. What will happen over here? We need three sodiums for every one of these groups and one PO4 group. So we're just going to use that. Remember that represents one PO4 group and we still have enough for one more of those, right? Three and one. So now you can see we have one of these plus three of those gives us three of these and two of those. And let's double check by bringing everything back over to the reactant side. So we have three, barium three, two PO4s, three, Na2s and it all works out. This concludes our series on chemical recipes and balancing equations. Uh, coming up next, we're going to talk about forming ionic compounds. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and 
be sure to like this video. That helps the YouTube algorithm know that this is a really great resource for people who are learning chemistry. So then hopefully it'll refer other people to my channel. And tell all your friends if you're taking chemistry right now and people are getting stuck, tell them about my videos and get them to subscribe too. See you soon.